a year of cosmic wonder with the James Webb Space Telescope. With a new image, NASA commemorates the first anniversary of doing science with the most powerful observatory ever sent to space. By now, perhaps we should be getting used to unreal images of the cosmos made with the James Webb Space Telescope. But a year after NASA released the Cosmic Observatory's first imagery, the space agency has dropped yet another breathtaking snapshot of our universe. Wednesday's image was Roa Fiuchi, the closest nursery of infant stars in our cosmic backyard. Located a mere 390 light-years away from Earth, this cloud complex is chock-full of stellar goodness. Around 50 stars with masses comparable to our sun are sprinkled in white, some fully formed and shining bright, others still hidden behind dark, dense regions of interstellar dust. Zoom in closer and you will even find a faint galaxy or two. Near the center of the image is a mature star called S1, its starlight illuminating the wispy yellow nebula around it. Toward the upper right are streaming red jets of molecular hydrogen, material that gets spewed out on either side of forming protostars. Black shadows near these regions are accretion disks of swirling gas and dust, some of which could be in the process of creating planetary systems. The awe the image inspires is comparable to how researchers feel about the web's first year of science. As an astronomer that lives and breathes this mission, I'm having to work really hard to keep up. There are so many discoveries, said Jane Rigby, the senior project scientist for the telescope at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. She finds it fitting that the customary gift for one-year anniversaries is paper, because that's exactly what researchers using the telescope have been churning out for the past year. Scientific Papers The observatory launched on Christmas in 2021, and scientists spent the next six months prepping the telescope for action. Unfolding its sunshield and the honeycomb-like array of golden mirrors, then running tests of the four instruments used to observe the cosmos. When it was ready, the web embarked on its journey to peer into the depths of the universe. The telescope's agenda has been jam-packed ever since. It has checked out asteroids, quasars, exoplanets and other cosmic phenomena galore. For DR. Rigby, one of the most gratifying accomplishments of this past year is the way the mission has delivered on its promise to reveal the earliest moments of cosmic time. That was the elevator pitch. We are going to show you the baby pictures of the universe, she said. Indeed it has. Before JWST, astronomers knew of only a small handful of candidate galaxies that existed in the first billion years after the Big Bang. Within the past year, hundreds of them, bigger and brighter than expected, packed with forming stars swirling around supermassive black holes, have been confirmed. The lonely work of picking the universe's best astronomy pictures. In June, specialists gathered in Baltimore to select images from the James Webb Space Telescope to share with the public. Keeping the results to themselves hasn't been easy. The data from the telescope is better than we promised DR. Rigby said. It's overperformed in almost every way. Already, the telescope's schedule for the next year is set, with roughly 5,000 hours of prime observing time for a suite of projects related to galactic formation, stellar chemistry, the behavior of black holes, the large-scale structure of our universe and more. Many of these projects, more ambitious than last year, now that scientists know what the telescope can do, are dedicated to following up on Webb's own discoveries. Though the telescope is operated by NASA, the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency, observers from around the globe were selected to use it. This is the telescope for humanity, and we want the best ideas from the whole world, DR. Rigby said. That's how we are doing things. Baltimore, after the image flashes up on the projector, a few quiet beats tick by, punctuated only by a soft wow. Everyone is processing. Then more wows bubble out, and people are talking over one another, laughing. Suddenly two astronomers, Amaya Moro Martin and Carl Gordon, are out of their chairs, sticking their noses closer to the space fantasia on screen. Agog, it's a jet. This is full of jets. At the crisp, hallucinatory grandeur of new stars sprouting from a nebula like seeds from a flower bed. 
The screen zooms in, in, in toward a jutting promontory many light years long that stands out in sharp relief. Oh my god someone says, only that someone was me, accidentally. Welcome to the team someone else responds. On Tuesday morning, this view of the Carina Nebula was made public alongside other new observations from the James Webb Space Telescope. But it made an earlier debut on another Tuesday morning, this one in June, when a small team clutching coffee cups gathered around a conference table at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore for one of many morning meetings to receive, process and repackage for public consumption what humanity's latest and greatest set of eyes could see after the team members had first signed non-disclosure agreements to ensure no early leaks. No one seemed to know quite how to describe this this image. Some of it was unfamiliar even to the astronomers. This little arch thing, I don't understand dr. Gordon mused, pointing. Maybe they could call that piece a banana or a candy cane. And what about the rest of it? An otherworldly landscape, granting that there was no land, and that any actual worlds out there were smaller than individual pixels. Monument Valley beneath the starry sky. Mist rising off a mountain valley in gusts larger than our solar system, coursing along tramelines of magnetic field. A coastline etched into the Azure Caribbean, or sand dunes, or a billowing veil, with deeper, galaxy-studded space shining through. For six weeks, this group, a mix of astronomers, press officers and science communicators, raced to assemble an early highlight reel for the 10 billion space observatory, launched on Christmas Day last year. It was to be a packet of first glimpse visuals intended to tease the ultimate promise of a space mission more expensive than the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe so far. At the very last minute on Monday, the day before the originally scheduled release, President Biden upped the stakes even more by introducing one of the images at the White House. These images are going to remind the world that America can do big things, he said. Even reaching this point had taken decades of planning, threatened cancellations, delays upon delays, a pandemic and a round of harrowing reverse origami that was needed to unfold the telescope in deep space without breaking it. In Baltimore, this group's task was a mix of on-the-fly science, public communication and brand management. Blow everyone's mind, show policymakers what all those appropriations had paid for, and assure the rest of the scientific world that yes, some of the universe's most elusive secrets might at long last be within reach. The new telescope's still-functioning predecessor, Hubble, now 32 years old, solidly in the millennial generation, had underscored the stakes. Hubble's first-look images made it obvious that its mirror was flawed, angering Congress and turning the project into a punchline. But after successful repairs, scientists working on Hubble went on to crank out jaw-dropping protoviral photos of galaxies and nebulae like the pillars of creation inspiring countless careers in the sciences, mine included. Before becoming a science journalist, I spent two years as a data analyst for Hubble, which is also run out of the Space Telescope Science Institute. But James Webb is another beast altogether, so distinctive and advanced in its capabilities that even veteran astronomers had little idea what to expect of the images it would yield. Much of that is because the web operates in infrared wavelengths. At these frequencies, inaccessible to human eyes, clouds that look solid to Hubble dissolve into wisps of cirrus. Distant galaxies grow brighter, new details rise out from the black, and space itself is set aglow by the light of organic molecules coughed out in the last gasps of dying stars. Simply showing off this stuff would demand a distinct color palette and style. NASA wanted to start pushing out the first images within six weeks of the telescopes coming online. And while staring into the abyss of the cosmic sublime for weeks on end would have its perks, the cone of silence around the project could also prove lonely. In early June, for example, Klaus Pontepidan, the astronomer leading this early release team, was the first human to download the new telescope's full deep field view. This long, probing look at distant galaxies peers further back toward the start of time and the edge of space than any instrument of humanity has ever managed. I was sitting there, staring at it for two hours, and then desperately, desperately wanting to share it with someone he said. But I couldn't. 
Space exploration is never just about space. Stories matter too, and they're often told by imagery, whether an above-the-fold print, a slickly produced live stream or a Netflix special. This tradition stretches at least as far back as the 1960s when none other than James Webb, an early NASA administrator whose name would grace the new telescope, embraced art and visual communication as a key part of justifying the Apollo program. He actually came from the State Department, where he was very well versed in hearts and minds campaigns said Lois Rawson, a historian of science at the University of Southern California. While Webb was its second-ranking official, the State Department embarked.